Hey friends, buckle up for a new episode of the Seller's Journey Podcast with Uvaro CEO, Joseph Fung. In this episode, we had the pleasure to sit down with Annie Kingston. Annie took the road less traveled and set off to see the world when she graduated from university. With experiences as a teacher, flight attendant, and writer under her belt, see how she jumped headfirst into a sales career when the time was right. Stay tuned. Annie, thank you so much for joining us. I'm so pumped to have you on the show. This is this is a blast. Thank you. Hi, Joseph. Thank you so much. It's so great to be back. Oh, my goodness. We've got so much to cover. Um, you have had such an amazing, incredible journey through your career, uh, even leading up to Uvaro afterwards. I know that there is a ton of wisdom that's kind of sitting in your brain that we're going to try and pull out for, for our audience. Uh, but people always want to know, our guests, where are they, what they do. So could you could you help them out with that? What does Product Board do and what's your role? Sure, absolutely. So I am the new renewables manager at Product Board um, and Product Board is a customer centric product management platform that helps people, up, sorry, product teams get the right products to market faster. And um, we do this by helping them understand what their customers actually need, prioritizing what to build next and aligning everyone around a roadmap. It's kind of a new space and it's pretty cool. So I'm learning something new every single day. It's a, it's a cool product. I've had the benefit of having had a chance to use it, been a customer, all of that. So I'm super pumped with the conversation. We got intros out of the way. Uh, let's actually hop in. Okay. Yeah. I'm so excited. I, people who are <laughs> listening in and uh, aren't looking at the videos, uh, you can't see the huge smiles on Annie's and my faces. This is an interview that uh, I know I've been waiting for. So this will be, be fun. Thank um, you. Annie, so let's start off right after school because... Uh, I know we, we have members who come to us from directly out of school, different careers, different journeys. Your journey is really unique. You, you took some time traveling internationally. Can you tell us a bit about that journey and how it set the direction of your career? Yeah, absolutely. So I graduated university into the recession. I was one of those lucky people in 2000. Mm. And I had always wanted to go traveling anyways, so I thought that would be a great opportunity to do it. So I booked a one-way ticket to Australia uh, and that's really where I learned how to handle the world on my own and grow up real fast. And from there, I just fell in love with Wanderlust. So I was consistently seeking out experiences to experience the world. And it only just dawned on me recently that up until Uvaro, I was always choosing jobs over careers. Like I was choosing jobs that would enable me to have incredible experiences, like move to the Middle East and be a flight attendant at 21 years old. Sure, I love traveling. Moved to Singapore and be the director of our membership club. Amazing, what an opportunity. But a lot of those experiences taught me that there was really no ladder to climb. Um, there was, they're really just jobs instead of a career and a path. And so while I appreciate I did the first 10 years of my work experience um, in those types of experiences, I came to Uvaro at the end because I wanted a career. I wanted something that I could work through and um, continue to build my own personal and professional skills with. We're going to talk about your career and the direction and there's there's a ton of insights in there but i'm super intrigued that insight about i've been picking jobs over careers that comes across like hey i'm going to leave this behind me and choose a new direction but i've got to think there's things that you picked up in your times overseas as an intent that are helping you in your own career so could we could we explore that a little bit? What did you pick up in that myriad of in those myriad of jobs that you can now apply now? Uh, I'd say one of my absolutely like top skills is adaptability, and I learned that from being plopped down in different countries and figuring out how to find my own way. And in tech sales, that's like especially in fast growing tech companies, that's a skill that's essential. And I felt like I honed that over ten years of traveling. I've been to seventy countries, um, most of them 70. on my own. Yeah, and I live for that. I live for that new experiences and I live for the challenge of being somewhere new, meeting new people, hearing their stories and figuring out like how I best fit in. I, okay, I gotta, I'm gonna pause and go on a bit of a tangent there. 70 countries, I, I don't think I could name 70 countries. Uh, <laughs> being a flight attendant helps, but. Okay, there, there's a challenge I have to ask. Are there any that stick out to you as like, like a real gem, you can't wait to go back? Do you, can I ask, do you have a favorite? Absolutely, I get this question all the time. Uh, I love different places for different reasons, but my number one will always be Cape Town. Um, I know I appreciate that it can be a challenging place to live, but I've spent about three weeks there and geographically it's stunning. There's plenty to do. Uh, it's Africa, so it's exotic and new and exciting. And yeah, it just, it made a really big impact on me. Okay, so we've got this great example, but now we got to check. 
Where are you calling in from? Like, where are you now? I am in my living room uh, in Victoria on Vancouver Island. Oh, this is so good. Okay. Journey. And I really want to get to the insights, but I've got a couple of quick questions about your experience. Now, some of the people who listen in are people who have uh, just joined Juvara or they're considering something Juvara. So I've got a, a couple of questions there. Uh, you've got this wealth of experience. You joined the Juvara program. Can you tell us what was what were the first couple of weeks like for you? What was what were you experiencing while you were in the program? I guess the really important question to ask before that is like how I ended up with Juvara. So two years ago, my life looked very different. I was living in Singapore. I had a job that I loved. I built a life there. I had a partner of four years. Life was good. Overnight, though, the pandemic changed all those things. The company that I worked for had to shut down. Um, my work visa was attached to that. My partner and I went separate ways, and I found myself on a one-way ticket home to Canada into the winter, my least favorite season. Oh. <laughs> so it was important for me to find something that would ground me, bring me back, um, settle me, make sure that I you know, was putting pieces into place for what I was going to do next, and that's kind of how I found Ubaro. So... I came to Yuvaro from my parents' basement, uh, a little bit down and out, to be honest. It was a really tough year. Um, so the first three weeks at Yuvaro was just like getting back into feeling like myself, like meeting my, my I was going to say colleagues, but they were my fellow students, um, reintroducing myself to the world and to what I wanted. And so the first couple of weeks at Yuvaro was just like a very grounding space for me because it's exactly what I needed. That, that sounds both... Uh you know, rejuvenating, but it must have also been really difficult too. like the circumstances aside, like leading up to it, now doing it from kind of the basement of your parents place. Uh, how did that influence uh, kind of your participation? Like, how, how did you handle the outside factors and bring your best to the program? Honestly, I was all in. Um, the one thing I taught I was learned at Ivaro is that you get what you put in. And I was in a space where I was willing to put everything in. I didn't have anything else going on at the time. And I knew that this was going to be a launching pad for what I would do next. So it made me really show up. And I joke and say I'm an eager beaver. But I think I'm just honoring Canadian Day, Canada Day tomorrow. <laughs> I, I love the positivity. You have. Like, it just comes out from your your body language your voice all of it uh but you didn't have a perfectly smooth ride and uh, for those listening in like spoiler yeah. you know annie's in a great spot it great turns role. Out okay. but <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh you had an let's call it an interesting interview process at one point uh not asking you to name any names throw anybody under the bus but these things are good learning experiences could could you help people understand what you went through and the circumstances? And, and then we could poke around the edges. Absolutely. So I started interviewing um, when I was about three or four weeks left in Ubaro. And there was one company I was super excited about. They were actually the first people I had applied to. They seemed super excited about me. And so we totally breezed through the interview process. Um, I went to the final interview with the CEO, which is about a 15 minute call. I felt it went really well. I was super excited. I was basically about to change my LinkedIn. Um, and then I found out that he had vetoed me. He, for whatever reason, didn't see that I would be a good fit for his team. Um, this rarely happens, but it does happen. And for somebody straight out of the gate, like it was definitely a confidence crusher. I was confused. I was shocked. I was surprised. Um, but you know what? Honestly, I took about two days to deal with it. And then I went back out into the market and I kept interviewing. I landed a job in exactly the right place. I was promoted very quickly. And I'm very convinced that if I was still at that one place, I'd still be an SDR. So, you know, it worked out. Things happen for a reason. Mm -hmm. So to, to kind of unpack the experience just a little bit more, the uh, startups have all of their own chaos and uh, every interview process is a little bit different. But for folks who haven't gone through it, you said you went through all the interviews. How many interviews were in that process? I believe there was five steps. Okay. And uh, the company, we don't want you to name any names, but do you, can you share any details about the size of the company or the size of the organization that you were interviewing? With? I believe at the time they were about 200 people. They were growing rapidly. Mm -hmm. They were looking for SDRs. Um, yeah. And they are a great company and an exciting space. Just wasn't the right fit. So I, I remember at the time when we had the conversation, uh, my, re my reaction, I was astounded as you were because having, having a CEO do the last stage interview at a company at that stage is a bit of an anomaly. Mm -hmm. And uh, having them second guess the recommendations of a team is pretty bizarre 
uh, and and so I remember how startled I was when we had those conversations. Uh, and again, I'm sorry that you had to go through that process because that wasn't a pleasant one. Honestly, um, Joseph, it it, I, it does happen. Like it happens very rarely, but it does happen. And while at first I was mortified, embarrassed, and pretty sad about it, to this day I'm happy to share the experience because if anyone listening, if it happens to you, like yes, it can be tragic, but it really does turn out okay. So reflecting on that, like I love the, the positivity about it. Is there anything you changed in your subsequent interviews or processes? Like any kind of tactical takeaways that changed in, in your behaviors or, or more just like, hey, they made a bad choice. The and, feedback you know, <laughs> they, on that one that. was interesting. It felt like a one-liner, which I tried to take to heart. Um, but I realized if I just kept putting myself out there and being myself, eventually somebody would understand and see my potential. And Honestly, like I said, just not the right fit. You end up where you're supposed to end up, and I'm pretty happy where I am. Okay. Uh, if you're talking to somebody who was at a similar stage in, in kind of their career where you were in that interview process, uh, or someone who's interviewing with a CEO at a startup, that's 200 people, uh, do you have any advice for those individuals that you might give them? Uh, just be prepared going into it. Uh, and also surround yourself nice. with people who understand if it doesn't go your way. Like, I was so lucky to be able to hop on a call with you at the time, Joseph, and you were talking me through it saying, you know, this isn't normal. It doesn't always happen. You got to get back out there. And as someone who was brand new to SAS, like, that was amazing and perfect to hear because how is I to know that's not something that happens very often? So just having people around you that are very supportive um, and they can help you through the hard times as well as the good times is pretty key to success in any career, I think. And I'll, uh, I'll reiterate it for, for you, but also anybody listening in, it, it wasn't you. It was, uh, <laughs> but on that, like on the evidence that it wasn't you, you had, after that, you, you've had a wicked journey of roles. Uh, can you give us the high level overview of Kind of like where you landed, how you progressed in your career, like what got you to your role now at Product Board? Absolutely. So I started off at an HR software company called Sapling. I was an inbound SDR. I threw myself into everything. And, you know, in hindsight, I find like I was just multi-threading myself through the organization, uh, putting time on people's calendars or outside of my department, uh, being really supportive to my colleagues and just doing my job, doing it well, being super keen. I think I earned the fastest promotion in the company's history. It's a bit of a right place, right time, but also like, you know, they saw my potential. And so within four months, I was promoted to an account manager. I was the second account manager at Sapling. So there was still lots to learn for us as a group and build out. Um, and from there, I, I was there for about a year before I decided I wanted a new challenge and moved on to product board. Um, I, I love that. You 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 just jammed so much information. <laughs> Sorry, I do that. So at <laughs> No, it was perfect, like high bandwidth. But at the risk of, of kind of repeating, I don't want people to miss something you mentioned right there. You talked about how fast you were promoted. And, and you're right, there's a big dose of luck in timing and location. So let's acknowledge that there's some luck. But you also said uh, you did a lot of the right things. You talked about multi-threading, building those relationships. Can we unpack that a bit? What do you think you did that contributed to your promotion in such a short window? I mean, I don't think this works at all companies, but it was super natural for me. I wanted to get to know everybody. It was a brand new company. Mm -hmm. I was working remotely. I was in my living room. So I had simply put time on people's calendars. Like, what can I learn about your role? What can I learn about your department? And one of the people who I ended up speaking with ended up being my manager four months later. Um, and, you know, we had a... I don't know if you guys have tacos. We have this taco channel on Slack, and so you can give accolades to your, uh, and, sorry, you can give accolades to your colleagues when they do something well for you. And so, I was just always trying to help out where I could because I didn't always know the answer to my own questions. But if I could answer a colleagues, I would help them with that. And so I just kind of built up that I was like there, I was serious about my job, and I, you know, got to move on to a really great place. So. Thinking about that that promotion, uh, you've got two different roles there. You know the the kind of SDR role, the account manager. Uh, some of the people listening into this podcast don't know what those roles are or the differences. So if you're chatting with someone who's brand new to the industry, how would you describe those roles and what was different in in that promotion? So SDR is hunting for new business, um, doing discos, and making sure that whoever you're talking to could be the right fit for your product. Whereas being an account manager is you're working with them throughout the course of their first and several year journey. So the thing I love about most about software sales is it's not a one-off sale. Like you're actually not selling, you're partnering with people. So you're finding people who really will get value out of your product. And if they don't, the account manager hears about it later. 
<laughs> so actually, I was planning on going into becoming an account executive, but in hindsight, I actually really love being an account manager because you're working with existing business. Uh, you're building out that relationships. So you're getting the feedback like, hey, did this prove its value to you? If it did, why? If it didn't, tell me more. And so I find account manager super cool because you're talking to people who've actually used your product, not selling them on the dream of using your product. So uh, I got to ask, did you have any situations where you had to kind of wrap the knuckles or give some feedback to the SDRs or AEs that that brought customers in? Uh, Maybe not the right Not all deals are great deals. uh, And unfortunately, you don't always find that out until the end. But there's a million factors that go into that. Oftentimes, the company that bought your product doesn't even have the bandwidth or they had a change within their organization. Whoever was leading the project is now gone. So there's million different reasons why by the time you get to renewal it may not have been the right fit but yeah i've had some conversations i i love the kind of holistic view you have to it the kind of wisdom and the maturity you have in that answer there's so many people who go through this journey land a role and then find themselves always pointing fingers you know it's like the leads weren't good enough for marketing or hey the account churned because sales didn't do their job and i love the the wisdom that you bring to it because i think that's a it's a really healthy perspective, and I can see why you're getting promoted so quickly. Uh, it makes a lot of Thank sense. Thank you. Okay, product board. I've seen you post amazing things about the company. It seems really engaging. Uh, would love to just understand, you know, what attracted you to this new role? Like, it, you've had a lot of opportunities. You could make your choice of where you wanted to go. So, what attracted you to this role at product board? Um, yeah. So the 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 real appeal for this role is that it was a brand new role within the organization. It was an opportunity for me to build out the functions and hopefully, possibly manage a team one day. I thought it was really exciting that we would be asking questions that were never had never been asked before, um, and just building out something that can make a massive impact. Uh, it was, sounded really exciting to me. This is this is really cool because you've got a brand new role that uh, where the role is brand new to the organization, and a lot of folks who don't they aren't familiar with tech or with SaaS, don't realize that companies grow so quickly that the roles change. So can you share a little bit about, uh, again, don't share anything confidential, but maybe a bit around the size of the team or the organization. What kind of what led to the company saying, let's make these new roles? Absolutely. So Renewals Manager kind of sits between like customer success and account managers. Like, like an AM, my role is to renew customers, you know, maximize retention, identify expansion opportunities, and really just add value where I can. And Product Board found a need for this because I sit in the scale section where um, renewals were kind of just happening automatically and nobody was going in and having conversations with them to understand better, like what value they were getting out of the product, what value they maybe weren't. And so they brought myself and my counterpart in to kind of be that, like, not the last line of defense. But in some cases, obviously, the last line of defense, but other times just that reminder throughout the journey, like one of my favorite things is getting on a customer call and sharing like a new release that maybe the product manager had never heard of. And the great thing about product board is, you know, it's product people making things for product people. And so we're constantly sending out incredible releases and listening to our customers. Our whole thing is listen to your customers so you can build products that matter to them. And so we do that in spades. And so it's really fun to see and watch and be able to share with my own customers. I'm more of like a a value add consultant in the end, I think. I like to think. Totally. I think the the right kind of person that's in that post-sale side of the business has to be adding value uh, or else the customers aren't going to stick around. So I think it's totally the right philosophy. Thinking about your journey, you... I love it. The beginning of our conversation, you talked about how you were picking kind of jobs over careers, um, thinking about just that idea, kind of the career, you know, any Kingston's career trajectory. Uh, if we're chatting again in a couple of years, what are some of the things you would have liked to accomplish or where do you see yourself? Like, what, Where are you aiming towards now? You know what? The last two years have gone by so fast and there have been so many unexpected twists and turns. It's been really exciting. So I genuinely cannot tell you where I'll be in three to five years. And honestly, I wouldn't want to. Like, I love being open (laughs) to every new experience that comes my way. The last 10, 15 years have shaped me that way. But my number one priority right now is to build out this function at Product Board. Like, it's a crazy cool opportunity to actually make a huge impact and show that to the business and show them why they were smart in hiring this role and creating this role. So my job for the foreseeable future will be to do that. And then ideally build out the department. I honestly don't know if I want to be a manager quite yet. I think there's a difference between being a leader and a manager. 
I've always convinced, I've always thought of myself as a good leader because I'm generally the captain on most of my teams. I plan my friends' social calendars. Um, but when it comes to being a manager, it's very different. So I definitely want to start exploring that in the future, get a better understanding if that's a fit for me um, and see where we could go from there. So you talked about make this role successful. Yeah. yeah. What does success look like in this role? How, how are you measuring yourself in accomplishments and, and progress and success? Well, as an organization, uh, just a customer success scale organization, we have a goal to save a million dollars. So I guess that's my first main goal. Um, but really, my goal is personally is to kind of obviously prevent churn, get a better understanding of why people churn and really try and bring people back around who are about to churn. Like they've invested in this product. They've spent time and money and energy adopting it. Um, like I said, there's various reasons why it doesn't take off within different organizations. And if I can help people better understand why that was and help turn it around, like that's a huge win for me. So you shared a bit about your success uh, and making Assuming we make this role successful, you hit all the targets, the organization is going to grow this team. Um, if people are looking to help you or a product board, you know, they're listening in, they're like, oh my goodness, I learned so much from Andy. How can I help her out? You know, what what should they keep their ears open for? Uh, what can they, they watch to help you and the team grow? I suspect eventually we'll be hiring more renewals managers for my team. So that would be one place. But honestly, just take a look at your organization and your product building process. Like at Product Board, we actually care about product ex excellence and we believe it and we breathe it and we live it. And at the end of the day, even if you don't buy Product Board, but it helps you kind of reassess how you're building your products and who you're building it for, that's a win for product development everywhere. So uh, yeah, just really consider why you build what you build. That for us is a win. This is fantastic. Uh, you've dropped a ton of pearls of wisdom. You've shared a ton of great insights. If people want to get in touch with you, they want to reach you, what's the best place for them to reach out and connect with you? Uh, you can link uh, LinkedIn, of course, you know, Annie Kingston at LinkedIn. I also have a pretty infamous Instagram social media handle. It's catch me if you can. -y. Uh, that felt like a really good idea until you're trying to say it over the phone to visa. It's like 30 so, like letters, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> catch me if you can -y. anywhere on the internet and LinkedIn, of course. Awesome. We'll be sure to toss those into the show notes. Uh, Annie, this has been amazing. We've covered so much territory. You've shared some incredible insights and I've had a blast in this conversation. I can't believe we hit so much in such a tight time. Thank Joseph, you. Thank you. It's funny. The last time we talked one-on-one, -on -one, it was very different than it is today. I remember. So I so appreciate your support throughout this whole journey and yeah, just stoked to be invited back. Thank you. That's it for this episode of the Seller's Journey Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Subscribe for more episodes, connect with us on LinkedIn, and join the movement towards finding career success today.